You guys ready to hear about Metagross? <laughs> See what uh, Metagross has going on. So looking at the Game Press Pokemon page, their Pokemon list here, you can see the CP and the stats of all the Pokemon and Gen 3 Pokemon. So if you ignore the legendaries and you ignore this uh, monster here, Slack King, uh, you'll notice that Metagross is on par with, you know, Dragonite, Salamence, and Tyranitar in terms of CP and, you know, reducibly stats, right? Yeah, looking a bit more closely at Metagross, we see that it's got a uh, 257 attack stat, which is ranked at the 13th highest attack stat in the game, uh, of Gen 3 Pokemon included, and including legendaries, right? Its defense is ranked 18th, and its stamina, uh, not doing as hot, 92, right? But this hunk of metal, it's not about the stamina, it's about that, it's about that massive, powerful attack stat. Now, when we go down, we're going to see the movesets and, oh shoot, that's right. We don't know what the movesets of these Pokemon are, right? Right? Well, as with the other videos, we can kind of make assumptions if we check the Bulbapedia page. All right, so looking at Metagross's Bulbapedia page here, uh, we see all sorts of information you can learn about Metagross. But more importantly, what's relevant to us is you can learn what moves Metagross learns in the main games, right? So from this, we can kind of draw an inference on what kind of moveset Metagross is going to get in Pokemon Go. Now looking at moves that we currently have in the game that Metagross does learn, we've got Confusion, Metal Claw, Bullet Punch, Zen Headbutt, Psychic, and Hyper Beam. Because, you know, we love seeing Hyper Beam on our super strong Pokemon. It's the best move. Now this isn't all that Metagross has, and it's not all that Niantic pulls from when they determine what movesets Pokemon are going to get. They also look at what they learn by TM. And as far as what we currently have in the game that Metagross can learn by TM, we've got some of the basic stuff that you probably expect, such as Earthquake, you know, uh, basically everything can learn Shadow Ball. Going down a bit more, we see, oh god, the terror, right? Gyro Ball. <laughs> be kind of unfortunate. I mean, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but it wouldn't be the best thing either. Flash Cannon, not too hot, not too bad. And uh, scrolling down, it doesn't learn any egg moves, but there are move tutors. And that does, the move tutor does give us hope for Iron Head. You might be wondering why there's no uh, Heavy Slam, though. Metagross is supposed to be one of the heaviest Pokemon, um, regarded as being even heavier than Snorlax. So I'm actually kind of personally surprised to, to look at this list and not find Heavy Slam. So not being able to learn Heavy Slam in the main games, it, it kind of pulls us away from having the, the good steel move and puts us more towards gyro ball so i don't know we'll have to see what happens there so how do these charge moves actually perform in the game well you all know me i made a graph on it all right so plotting out some of the moves that i feel metagross could learn on a graph we see that confusion with iron head obviously the clear winner uh metal claw with iron head not too far behind so if it, we at least get iron head you know we're, we're kind of assured to be doing um some pretty very okay performance here right now we got here, and it's uh, Confusion with the Flash Cannon and Confusion with Psychic. And we got the Confusion Gyro Ball. It's not as bad as what Bullet Punch and uh, Zen Headbutt are giving us down here with the with the Iron Head. So it does, Confusion would bring it up. So it kind of like puts some emphasis on like praying for Confusion or at least uh, praying for Metal Claw. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so we're looking at this graph here, and you're probably thinking like, well, what about... What about Meteor Mash, Mr. Swag? You know, how's that doing? Well, this these graphs, uh, this plot here is against a uh, level, a <laughs> level, a tier 4 Dragon Tail Outrage Dragonite raid, right? The same one I used for the um, Gardevoir content. And so Dragonite gets hit neutrally by both Steel and Psychic. So while uh, I don't want to go through some weird multipliers and stuff like that to to make up a meteor mash i could just simulate future sight and pretend that it's a steel type attack since it'd be you know neutral damage with stab either way so i did just that uh it looks like confusion with meteor mash is definitely gonna bring metagross's attack up to some new heights here and that's assuming that it's as impressive as future sight is another thing that we can see that's going on here is that meteor mash 
is also bringing up the performance of the lesser fast moves, right? So if we get Zen Headbutt with Meteor Mash, then it'd be kind of on par with that, um, with Confusion Flash Cannon, Confusion Psychic kind of area. So it'd be it'd be kind of like a, a savior of sorts if Niantic screws us over on the fast moves. And once again, assuming if it's as impressive as Future Sight. So these graphs are plotting it in that Tier 4 Dragonite raid. Uh, how is, you know, how is Metagross actually performing in that raid? So pulling up the graph, it looks like uh, Metagross isn't doing so hot here uh, comparatively to the other, like, more certified Dragon Slayers. You know, we've got the Fairy Queen Supreme, right? Gardevoir leading the charge. Then we got all sorts of ice types well above it in terms of DPS with just about the same amount of TDO, right? And uh, these lesser fairies, right? You know, like you might be thinking like, oh, Metagross isn't doing so hot in this Dragonite raid. What? Well, you got to consider that Metagross isn't getting any super effective damage off here. It's just resisting Dragonite, right? And for it to perform this well with just a, uh, a single resistance to these dragon type attacks, as far as it's like bulky TDO kind of damage goes, it's actually pretty impressive. Like it's arguably on par with these two fairies, even though they are lesser fairies, they still have an immunity to resistance and they deal stab super effective damage with their charge moves. So for Metagross to be like on equal footing with them, that's actually pretty dang cool. And then as far as we look at uh, Pokemon that like are clearly ahead of Metagross here. Well, we got the legendary Articundo, right? And like 4x super effective damage and legendary stats, like it makes sense that it would be so far ahead in both DPS, getting the, you know, four times super effective damage in. I think Metagross is actually doing pretty good. If you, if you consider uh, this specific case, you know, are you going to be wanting to bring your Metagross to a Dragonite raid? Well, if you don't have anything else, uh, it's certainly a very good option. I mean, who knows how rare uh, Gardevoir is going to be. I'm not powering up Articuno anytime soon, you know, and I only got one good smug Lapras ready to rock and roll. So barring anything else, Metagross could be one of my best options for this particular Dragonite raid. Now, there is one raid that I do find that Metagross does have a very unique sort of niche advantage in. So one area where Metagross does have a interesting degree of swag is in the Heavy Slam Machamp raids, right? Now we recently had Ho-Oh out, and if you watched my analysis on Ho-Oh or read the Game Press article, you do see that Ho-Oh is rocking it in this niche situation as well. Now looking at Metagross though, as far as a non-legendary option goes, it looks like even with like a bad moveset like Zen Headbutt um, or just Zen Headbutt and Confusion, uh, it, it seems like Metagross is still swagging. And if it even has like a offbeat charge move, if as long as it has Confusion with the Iron Head, then it'd be swagging it. If it's got Confusion and Psychic, dude, even better. Like if it's got Confusion and Psychic, it definitely rivals the uh, the usage of Lugia if you consider you know the value of the DPS versus the TDO. You know, I don't think Metagross is going to be replacing uh, Mewtwo or Lugia or Ho-Oh in this particular kind of raid. And then, once again, Gen 3, uh, is uh, Machamp still going to be a raid? Is it still going to have Heavy Slam? You know, that's something that we'll have to see. But in this particular situation, you know, getting the super effective damage in with the Psychic type attacks, getting the resist in from the Steel type attacks, the Steel typing... You know, uh, Metagross really does make a huge difference in this raid that a lot of people struggle with as far as the solo challenge goes. Now you might be wondering, like, well, how does it do against the fighting type attacks? Like, Dynamic Punch, the other very difficult moveset for Machamp. Looking at how it does against Dynamic Punch on this graph, it kind of falls back like uh, Gardevoir does against, uh, against the Heavy Slam. So, uh, not really handling the neutral hits that well. But it seems like, you know, a lot of Pokemon really aren't handling those neutral hits that well when the shoe's on the other foot with Heavy Slam, you know? I don't think this is a weakness for Metagross because it's still performing well against the Heavy Slam set, which is the set people are having more of a struggle with. So one place I feel that Metagross is truly going to shine in, though, is in the gym scene. So here, a little bit low effort. You can criticize me if you want to, but I just uh, stuck Metagross's performance on the on the blissey counters chart from the from the previous videos and uh it's kind of going off the rails like just 
look at that nonsense, you know? Um, so this here, the, the, the y-axis is the power. So the percentage of blissies that it can defeat before fainting. Uh, right now, our, our current champion is the Tyranitar that can beat, you know, roughly two blissies before fainting, right? Uh, looks like Metagross at its best could do better than that, even faster, maybe getting a blissey and a half in at a speed that's, you know, comparable to Raikou or Executor doing it. Uh, what this means is that it could replace, um, what, Tyranitar as being the most, like, potient item, revive efficient blissey counter. Now, what Tyranitar has going for it in terms of the, of the power here is that it's got that doubled up resistance, that immunity tier resistance to Blissey's psychic attacks. And it also has resistance to its normal type attacks, right? It's kind of Achilles heel is that Dazzling Gleam. And we all know Dazzling Gleam's like messing with everyone. Like, like, boy, M Champ here doesn't like no Dazzling Gleam. But Metagross, dude, Metagross has a doubled up resistance to psychic type attacks as well. Steel type has a normal resistance and psychic has a normal resistance to psychic. So it's got that same kind of immunity tier resistance going on that Tyranitar has. And then on top of that, steel type resists normal. So same as Tyranitar. One key difference from Tyranitar though, Metagross resists Dazzling Gleam. This sounds kind of familiar to the Ho-Oh situation, right? Just like Ho-Oh, uh, Metagross can survive a high-level Blissey's um, Dazzling Gleams and survive without dodge. Now, does this mean that people are going to be using Metagross on attack against these normal-type Pokemon like Blissey? Uh, you know, and you, you could still consider, like, well, dude, yeah, your Metagross can do that, but, you know, I can just fuel a Machamp to do it that much faster, right? So people are still going to use Machamp to fight Blissey's. Um, and you don't have to use Metagross to fight Blissey, right? But because Metagross does have this high performance, uh, it is an optimal counter. And I definitely do feel like if its movesets are good, people will be using it. And if Metagross is being used as an attacker, then that might shift our meta a bit. If you consider what our meta is right now, we currently use like the three normal types. They're our mainstays. You know, if you really want to hold down a gym, you're going to put Blissey on it. You're probably going to put Chansey on it. And nobody wants to deal with the Blisslax combo. And when I say nobody, I mean like, you know, people that aren't crazy hardcore about the game, you know? And to back up these normal types, you know, we're including things that resist uh, fighting and dragon and dark type attacks, you know, so fairy Pokemon, you know, well now you've got Metagross coming in and Metagross doesn't care about the normal types. Metagross just rips through the fairies like they're nothing, you know, and Metagross don't care about Dragonite either. So, you know, so this guy's going to be rocking through. I think what we're going to see is a higher emphasis placed on steel type defenders. Uh, right now, you know, Steelix is the main boy we got. Metagross and Agron are good, you know, steel types that could be optimized for defense. Uh, and we'll also be seeing water types getting a shift back up. Now, I know a lot of people don't feel like Vaporeon has fallen from grace. I feel it has, but this might bring like an uptick back up. Like Vaporeon might become a bit more relevant for optimized gym defense. I guess so overall, how is Metagross doing? Well, it definitely looks like it's going to be a little moveset dependent. You know, a lot of the simulation graphs I showed used Iron Head. Um, but if you're looking at that graph where it, you know, shows all different moves in a gradient, you know, like... It looks like, oh man, if it doesn't get good moves, then it might just be, like, good because of its stat. You know, we might be looking at a, a sort of Gyarados situation where it's like, oh man, such cool stats, man. But the moveset, come on, Niantic Gyro Ball? <laughs> come on, Niantic, why did you give him Gyro Ball? Like, I'm not saying he's going to get Gyro Ball. I'm, I'm praying for Iron Head or Meteor Mash, but we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, th so yeah, but like them... If Metagross gets a good moveset, like the other pseudo-legendaries, you know, it'll probably be generally good in all situations. It's not going to be the king of each matchup, but it's going to be, like, the next best thing, kind of. You know what I mean? Just floating in the back. Like, if you don't have the best ultimate counter, and you do have a Metagross, then, then you're going to be feeling pretty good about yourself. And then when you consider the, the specific sort of direct counter to things... Um, usually they're only good against that one thing, you know, like Articuno versus Dragonite, right? So 
kind of a, a poor stardust investment unless you're going for some sort of challenge clear where if you're investing in the pseudo legendaries um especially if you look at that dragonite raid if you're up against dragon moves having the pseudo legendary metagross powered up uh, above all else will help you out not only in that situation but in other situations as well and then if there are any raids where metagross does get that advantage in where metagross is the star player then it's going to be totally rocking it and you're going to be like oh man i'm so glad i dumped all my stardust in eight metagrosses like it's i know people that have uh seven maxed out tyrant towers and i don't understand it eight metagrosses so yeah <laughs> so be very good there and then as far as the gym side goes what we haven't really seen with the previous two gen 3 pokemon i put under the microscope right uh metagross is bringing something new to the table right it's uh it can actually fight blissey better than tyranitar in terms of the bulkiness goes it like ho -Oh, it can fight against the dazzling gleam sets without really worrying too much and it'll do it in a much more time efficient manner as well so you know so steel type dps might start weighing on gyms and that's going to push out fairy types it's going to bring in water and steel types as defenders and might throw off you know how we approach gyms how we defend gyms and how we attack them which even though gym defense is dead, I, I, I get it. Niantic could do a lot to make it more interesting again. Um, you know, a change of scenery, I kind of like it. I'm pretty excited for Metagross. I really, uh, I really hope that it's going to be as cool as, uh, as these graphs are making it look like. Hope it gets the right moveset, you know? So yeah, I hope you enjoyed my analysis on Metagross, the meta-mashing monster, right? Uh, this is the third installment of the Gen 3 Hype Train series. Uh, if you're curious about Salamence or Gardevoir, I suggest and check those videos out, uh, see how they're going. Um, the other two videos aren't done in this kind of stream recording format. They're more of like a comprised video kind of format. Kind of stressful to make, so I'm cutting back to this. I got finals coming up and a lot of stuff going on right now, so I don't have the time to dedicate to building a video uh, like that pretty difficult <laughs> to tell you the truth as far as continuing with the gen 3 hype trans series i do plan on doing another video next tuesday right so as with the other videos if you've been following along if you comment in the description let me know which pokemon you want to see next then that may be the focus of my next video right right and then if you're kind of interested in this content you want to see more of it uh, as always, you know, uh, like, comment, and subscribe, right? Swag tips. Oh, you know, that's, that's me. It's, you can see it right, right, oh gosh, right there. Swag tips. Oh, yeah, come on. Yo, boy, you, you, you know you want to subscribe to me. It's me, you, your boy, Ron Swag. You know, not only do I do uh, predictive analyses on uh, Gen 3 Pokemon, I mean, that's kind of a new thing I'm doing, um, but I also talk about the meta. Uh, chances are you've seen infographics of mine or read articles that I've written, um, you know, on Game Press or on the Silk Road. I've even done articles for Poke Battlers. So it's like, you want to know what's good? You want to know how to counter the, the hottest, newest raid? You know, I'm your boy, you know? So yeah, that's all I got to say for now. Goodbye.